two warriors face off against each other, the din of the busy pub growing to a gentle hush as eyes turn to the sudden altercation developing in front of them. No, I'm a forgiven louse. The first warrior speaks, a stocky, age-worn dwarf with a deep gray beard and fire behind his eyes that conflicted with his older features. And I got bad ears. So that's two points towards you to give you the chance to tell me you misheard. So I'll ask you one more time. What did you say about my cooking? I said your cooking is one of the best things to ever happen to an adventurer. Because those damn biscuits are harder than steel and your soup is more deadly than any poison. A hiss washed over the pub as everyone whispered about the response while the dwarf grinned and cracked his knuckles. Aye, guess my hearing is worse than I thought. Could have sworn you'd insulted my cooking, but all I'm hearing is that I want your arse beat. The furbolg let out a hearty laugh and let his club drop down partially, the end hitting the floor with a heavy thud. You can try, old man. Aye, but I can. Without warning, the dwarf darts forward with a near impossible speed, his fist driving into the furbolg's sternum with such force that the large creature did no more than wheeze and clutch his chest. Giving him no quarter, the dwarf uses his doubled over state to crack him clean across the jaw before whipping around and lifting his foot to drive its heel right into his temple. In almost five seconds, the battle was over and the furbolg drops to the floor, leaving the entire pub quiet before erupting into cheers. A strange request to get your arse handed to you, but I'm glad to oblige. When you wake up, young man. I'll be sure to cook you a nice meal. So, yeah. Monks. This class is definitely a pretty interesting one to talk about because unlike most of the classes in Dungeons & Dragons, it's not really tied to the same tropes that the others are. See, when looking at the traditional classes of rogue, fighter, barbarian, wizard, etc., most of these classes come from actually European myths and tales. I mean, look at Arthurian legend. You can find most of the archetypes we associate with D&D classes in those very stories. And it's not a secret that Dungeons & Dragons is predominantly inspired by European folklore either. Just look at the name. Dungeons and Dragons. And dragons come from a Weaster mythology- <laughs> Weaster. I thought you said Weast. Weast. And dragons come from Eastern mythology too, sure, but the dragons heavily featured in D&D art are known as Western dragons for their four-legged stature and fire-breathing traits, as opposed to their two-legged stature and the ability to float on the wind and generally hold pearls of some type. So, yeah, most of the classes are based on European folklore archetypes, which is what makes Monk really interesting because it is clearly based on a different archetype. An Eastern one. It's not exactly speculation or reaching to identify that this class is based heavily on the mystical warriors known through different Eastern legends, such as samurai, even though that in itself is actually a fighter archetype, ninjas, and of course, monks. Through the power of key and enlightenment, monks channel the very energy of the universe to propel their bodies into tasks once thought impossible. You know, that kind of stuff. This very fact immediately makes the class stand out as different, and its mechanics can really show that as well. It's kind of a mixture of a ton of archetypes wrapped into one. But quite honestly, Monk is crazy. Like, as a class, batshit bonkers, totally wild, this class can turn your entire campaign on its head kinda crazy. And that's, uh, well, that's a good thing. I wanna talk about why this class can let you do things you never thought were possible. I wanna talk about the mystical fighters and pains in the ass to dungeon masters everywhere, monks. So let's talk about that. So, interesting fact about the monk. It was originally introduced not as its own class, but as a sort of subclass for clerics of all things, back in original D&D and one of the first supplements ever released for the game. And that's really for the reason that when monks were first introduced, there was a much heavier emphasis on the spirituality side of them. After all, they were based on the archetype of a spiritual warrior who was connected to the inner strength and power that existed within them and the universe through intense study, meditation, and reflection on religion. Now to be 100% fair, I don't know much about older editions of d and I'm what you might call a youngster when it comes to that. So I could have gotten some of that wrong. If I did, please let me know in the comments. Just, you know, do so with the minimum amount of respect you would want to be treated. Thanks. Anyways, regardless, originally it wasn't its own class, and while it eventually became one in 5th edition, its identity has always been one of a fascination to me. Because, don't get me wrong, it fills in a niche that many want to play, a crazy, flexible, super agile, physics-defying badass with supernatural abilities that aren't outright spellcasting but still definitely break the mold as some sort of superpower. But, for me at least, that seems to be a much more specific niche than most of the classes which can usually be used to fit a variety of archetypes. However, for Monk, it seems like the class can really only fit two particular types of characters that people want to play, A, a mystical warrior, or B, a fist-throwing badass. And yeah, I know they can technically do more than that, but in my mind at least, it's hard to argue that the monk really does feel very specific when compared to other classes. 
but I'm sure there are plenty who disagree with me, and that's totally fine. But the reason I'm addressing this here is so that there's context into what I'm about to say about the class. Because the deal is, I have a serious love-hate relationship when it comes to the monk. Anyone who has watched my channel for a while knows that I DM far more often than I'm a player. I just really enjoy DMing. And while playing is fun, being a DM is where my passion lies. So, that being said, any DM who has ever had a player that played a monk knows. Monks will kick your ass to Tuesday and back if you have not prepared for them. And the reason for that is honestly really simple. Monks kind of break the action economy. For one, they get more attacks at earlier levels than any other class thanks to their flurry of blows and martial arts features. Not only that, thanks to their unarmored defense, they typically have a higher AC than your typical low-level character would as well. So, at earlier levels, your monk will be really hard to hit, and will have more attacks than anyone at the table, and they also have the single most infuriating feature a character can possibly have for a DM, and that's Stunning Strike. If you don't know, Stunning Strike can let you stun a creature until the end of, wait for it, your turn. Not theirs, yours. You know what that means? They can't take an action at all, and your player gets free advantage for the next turn, and they get to try to stun them. Again. Basically, if you have a monk in your party, as a DM, you can never have the party face a monster solo. Always give it minions or assistance, or it will get its ass kicked and wonder what the hell just happened when the little gnome punched it so hard it blacked out for four rounds of combat. And keep in mind, this is all at early levels for monk. One through five. So they are insane, and I probably hate them based off of everything I've said so far, right? Well, no. Actually, I love the monk. There's never been an experience where I have played, DM'd, or watched a monk where I did not have a great time. Here's why. This class is designed to allow a player to do the most amazing batshit insane stunts you have ever seen in your life and let them feel like the superhero we all play D&D for. See, monks get some features that let you do the really awesome stuff I personally love to see in my games. Unarmored movement, run incredibly fast, unarmored defense, dodge blows and spells by the skin of your teeth, martial arts, see a dragon and actually have the gall to punch that thing like the ballsy warrior you are, slow fall, take that massive jump and do a superhero landing, key, attack like a whirlwind, dodge impossible attacks or literally double your jump distance to fly across chasms. <gasps> the point I'm trying to make is, monks can do a lot of amazing, really cool cinematic things. And all of that was only levels 1 through 5, ignoring subclass features. And this right here is exactly why I love monks, especially for new players. Because they have the rules baked into them to let players do crazy physics defying things that they often ask for and us as DMs have to use the rule of cool to allow them to do. It's like it's a class that is made to make you feel like a badass. Actually, that's exactly what this class is now that I think about it. After all, it's clearly based off of the ninja movie archetypes I mentioned earlier and almost all of the monks features can be looked at and traced exactly back to moments in old martial arts movies. Case in point, deflect missiles. So this class is meant to consistently give you those cool moments and let you feel awesome about the capabilities of your character and the amazing feats they can achieve, and that's why I love them. Story time, I distinctly remember when a player was playing a monk in one of my campaign's most climactic battles and they were attempting to attack a villain who's flying high above them. He was having difficulty reaching them, and so he asked if he could use the monk's ability to run on water to run up a waterfall. Run. Up. A. Waterfall. Did that make sense? Eh, I mean, rules is written, monks can run on water and run up vertical walls at a certain level, so technically it might work? Should it work? Uh, no. But was it cool and the exact thing an awesome monk would do? Yes. Hell yes. So I let him. He ran up the waterfall, leapt off, and midair proceeded to unload every attack he possibly could on the villain before he hit the ground. Even better, he was away of the open hand monk, which meant he had the ability to use his flurry of blows to push the villain 15 feet. And he had just run up a waterfall above the villain, which meant he was punching the villain down back towards the ground as they both fell from great heights. Essentially, this monk just pulled one of the coolest moments in the campaign. As a DM, should I have allowed that amount of absurdity? Well, yeah, it was my campaign, and it was super cool. Would you have allowed it? I don't know, that's up to you. But for me, that was the absolute perfect culmination of everything that the monk can do. It was physics defying, it was spectacular, it was badass, and if you squinted at the rules in just the right way, it was just crazy enough to work. And that, that right there is why I think the monk is absolutely amazing. Because the niche it seems to fit is just that. Someone who is just crazy enough in their actions that it might just work. To quote one of the most prolific monk players of all time there is, Monks do dope monk shit, and I love that. Let me get it straight, they are not the best design class by a long shot. 
There's problems with what they can do, there's issues with how they scale, all that rule stuff that can be really important, so don't get me wrong on that. But at the end of the day, with a DM who's working with you, monks can do some amazing ridiculous nonsense that can be really, really cool. And to be honest with you, that's why you should play a monk. To go out and pull off all those amazing moves. To be crazy enough to punch a dragon. To be useful enough to stun a villain so your party can shine. To pull the crazy stunts that will be talked about in stories for years to come. To play a character who has harnessed themselves and learned how to be as useful as they can with just who they are so that they can shine bright, be amazing, support the party, and at the end of the day, do some really fucking cool dope monk shit. So go out and play a monk, you beautiful bastards. Go out into the world and make it your own. Don't forget to have a great day and never forget to play a role. Thank you. Come again. <laughs>